Hey guys, it's me. Um, I was going to show you some tips and techniques on how to catch your local panfish. If you have gravel pits near your house or if you're going to gravel pits, you know, if you want to catch some cr nice size crappie, bluegill, and maybe a few bass, I was going to give you some tips and techniques on that. Anyway, start off here. You're going to want to use some smaller tackle. As you can see, no, nothing big to use for some bass. Anyway, first of all, right here, it's just like a little fly jig. Um, you can find these at Bass Pro Shops, mostly. That's where I get them. Um, you know, fairly inexpensive. One or two bucks for that. Um, anyway, next, I kind of made this. Um, I have these little, it's like what you'd see on a bass rig, a spinner bait. A little kind of spinner thing. You can detach and put anything kind of jig on here. Right now, I have just a chartreuse little jig thing that I bought at Bass Pro Shops. Um, these work really well. Also, I used a different kind of jig down there, and it really worked. Anyway, next, um, you know, just standard, your standard twist tail jigs. Um, this is kind of big, mostly, you know, perch. Some bass will bite on these, not as much bluegill, but um, also, priority, you need a float. Um, I'm going to show you how to rig that here in a minute, but you definitely need a float if you're going to go after bluegill and crappie. It's a lot easier, and you know, you'll suspend that bait in the water where you want the, where those fish are at. Um, these never fail. You'll catch anything on these. A little MEP Zero. I usually use a Zero. My dad uses a two. He says anything will bite on a two, but I say, you know, if you're going to go after crappie or bluegill or perch, even bass, you know, you'll knock them dead. No matter what size, they'll bite on that. Um, also, next, not a jig, but it's these little power bait. They're called micro wigglers. Um, you know, they're just in a line. You just snap them off one at a time, and they're about that big. Not. You know, you can catch about anything on them, you know, but if you want to get some smaller, I mean some bigger fish, I wouldn't recommend using those. Um, next are just some little jigs that I bought, you can see from Bass Pro Shop. Um, you know, you got to have your color variety in here. I'll show you what they kind of look like. They're just little... Um, I don't know, it's just a little body with a small tail. It's just basic jig. You know, you can jig it off the bottom. Or I use it with these floats here. I'll show you how to rig that in a minute. Um, just gotta have your color variety. I just got chartreuse and silver. Because, you know, silver, you can catch anything. And chartreuse, it kind of depends on what the kind of mood the fish are in. Alright, next up, um, I got these you know, basic Walmart. They're just, um, yum. They're really cheap. They're about 96 cents per package. Little bags you buy them in. Anyway, um, these are just, they're just little tiny crawdads is what they are. They're about inch, inch long. Um, I, as I don't know if you can see or not, but, you can see that little hook right there. A little hook right there, anyway. Um, little tiny, I think it's a number 10 hook. I can't really remember, but it's a really just tiny gold hook. Just rigged it straight through, out the top. You just throw it out there and just kind of jig it on the bottom. Real slow, you know. Usually the fish go crazy over that. You can't really cast far, but if you can see the fish near you, you can probably get them. Um, next, believe it or not, not only are salmon eggs good for trout, you can knock them dead on panfish. You know, basically, if there's anything brightly colored that looks appealing to a panfish, especially bluegill, mostly, um, you know, they go crazy over these. It's basically live bait, which I am not supposed to use in my lakes, but I do anyway. This is the only type of live bait I use. Anyway, okay, next, um... Is you know small crankbaits, anything I'd say smaller than your middle finger will work. Um, you know you don't want to go very big at all because you know as far as panfish go, 
they're not going to bite on anything very big. If it's any bigger than your middle finger, they'll get scared of it. Anyway, here I'll show you how to rig your rod and reel if you're going to go after panfish. Okay, so what I have here is just a basic spinning reel. You don't want a bait cast, nothing like that. I don't do spin cast. I don't prefer that. I prefer a spinning reel. Open face spinning reel. This is it's a little bit bigger, more for, you know, trout, anything like that. This rod is basically good for anything. I've I've caught bass on it, trout, a lot of mostly panfish. Anyway, I have it rigged with some just Eagle Claw six pound test. I do six pound because four pound is a little bit weak in my opinion. Um, you know, you can get if you, you know you got to be prepared. Maybe if you got to jig something like that, you could be prepared for a big 18 inch four pound bass. All right, anyway, um, six pound test, good spinning reel, lightweight. You don't want one of those big saltwater spinning reels at all. That's overkill. Trust me and you won't be able to feel that bait at all the rod won't bend and you just don't want that um, medium to light action rod I'd say graphite you know just and don't be afraid to spend some good money like I'm talking around 40 50 bucks for a good combo I'm not talking anywhere over 60 all right I'll, t I'll show you how to rig this real quick so what I have up here is a slip float just uh like I showed you earlier just one of those little pieces of foam um, up here it's big I some people use bobber stops I can't afford or well I can afford them but I'm just too lazy so what I do is I use a split shot and it's big enough to where it'll stop the float and you know small enough to where it won't <coughs> put a ton of bend in your on your rod Alright, so this, and it's just a slip, it just slips back and forth. Kind of, you know, just you want some freedom with your bobber. You don't want it to just be bound up up here, you know. You want sensitivity on there. So I have another split shot to stop that, that when you're reeling in. Um, about two to three feet of, le of leader, depending on your depth. Um, I have another split shot rig here with a uh, steel swivel snap swivel and then on that you can basically put any jig like what I just showed you you can put bear hook with those little worm things or just about anything colorful has some kind of action to it will work salmon eggs will work too more, more for bluegill but any kind of jig will work you can let it sit out there still fish or you can slowly reel it in it's up to you anyway there's your tips and tricks on your local panfish Thanks for watching.